Hello, and welcome to another video presentation of Apex SQL Doc. This video explains how to set up and then automate the SSRS items documentation process using Apex SQL Doc, a SQL Server documentation tool which is used to document SQL Server databases, SSIS packages, SSAS cubes, and SSRS reports. The first step of setting up the SSRS documentation is to add the desired SSRS items. This can be done by clicking the Add SSRS Items button or selecting the Reporting Services tab and clicking the Add button. Once either of those two buttons are clicked, an additional menu will appear where you have to choose a data source and the location of the SSRS items. When it comes to documenting SSRS items, Apex SQL Doc offers the choice of documenting from three different data sources, file system, native web service, SharePoint web service. While documenting SSRS reports from the file system, all versions of SSRS from 2005 are supported. While documenting from the native and SharePoint web services, all versions from 2008 R2 are supported. To document single files from the file system, click the Add button. But, if you want to include a whole folder with SSRS items, click the Add Folder button. Then, navigate to the targeted location and click OK. To document SSRS items from native or SharePoint web services, select the corresponding option, and then provide a link to the web service and the folder. When the selection is complete, the list of connected SSRS items will be shown in the SSRS Items section now, select the desired items for documentation, and let's move on to the next step of the documentation setup process. There are no special user permissions required for creating an SSRS documentation within a local SQL Server. However, for native and SharePoint web servers, valid administrator or user credentials are required. When the selection of desired items is completed, it's time to set up the Reporting Services options. For that, Select the Item Details tab under Reporting Services and choose the options which need to be included in the documentation. Here, you can see that SSRS documentation details are divided into two sections, Report Items and Shared Items. When the desired SSRS Details options are selected, everything is ready for the documentation process to begin. But there are a few optional settings which can affect the documentation quality. SSRS documentation can also be customized with various options. To customize SSRS documentation, there is a choice between predefined output documentation styles or simply choose a CSS stylesheet file, which you can edit on your own. Apex SQL Doc also offers the choice of generating the documentation in five different output formats. CHM, HTML, Doc, DocX, and PDF. To choose an output format, click the File Format tab under the Output Options pane and select the desired format. In order to automate the process of SSRS documentation so we can run it unattended, we need to save all of the settings in a project file. To do this, just click the Save or Save As button in the main ribbon bar, and you can use it later to automate the documentation process. Next, we'll create a batch script which will be executed and will create the documentation automatically with a single click. This example will be about documenting report items from the file system. First of all, you need to specify the file path of the apexsqldoc.com file, which initiates the CLI of the Apex SQL Doc. Then, specify the project file location using the project file switch. And basically, this is all you need to specify before running the script unless there are some details that need to be changed. If you need to change some settings, specifying additional switches will help you override any setting. Here are a few examples of switches which can be specified additionally. To specify the documentation title template, use the Title Template switch in the format shown here. To specify the copyright text in documentation, use the Copyright Text switch. To include a custom logo in documentation, Use the Image switch. To specify the format of the documentation, use the Output Format switch. To keep the intermediary files, use the IFK switch. 
The intermediary files are deleted by default if the switch is omitted. After that, specify the output directory by using the output directory switch. To specify the file name of the documentation, use the output name switch. To overwrite any existing files with the same file name, we recommend using the force switch. The verbose switch is used for displaying meaningful, detailed messages about information of the documentation process. When including this switch, you will see informational messages of the processed operations in the output console. When you have specified all necessary switches, save the file with the .bat extension and execute it. After the documentation process of reporting items is complete, the following output is shown. Now, once you open the documentation, you will see all the included details, which were made automatically with a single click. Thanks for watching. For more information, please visit apexsequel.com.